Hi, about five months ago, I made a video where I made a ton of clothes to add into my wardrobe for fall and winter, and I want to do the same thing before spring and summer today. As far as sewing goes, I'm definitely still beginner to intermediate. Like I mentioned in my last video, I'm also very delusional, so I'll see something. I'm just like, I have to at least attempt to make it myself before I end up buying it or whatever the case is. And so that's what this video is. These are just a ton of things that I've been wanting that have been on my wish list or just things that I've been like missing in my wardrobe, I feel like. This is my delusional DIY spring wardrobe video. Also, if you've seen my Instagram stories about my serger, I recently had a serger and I'm really excited about it because I feel like it's lit a fire under my ass as far as like, I just wanna make everything now. You know what I mean? Like, cause I just feel like it's leveled up my quality and just like my confidence in my pieces. So yeah, I think I have like eight or nine pieces to share with you and I'm just going to show you how I made some of them and then show you them all and style them and i hope you enjoy if you do you can subscribe and i have been foaming at the mouth for a sailor top as we know and these are some of the inspiration pictures that i pulled i just want it to be super simple really just something i can wear with everything and i'm thinking maybe with a little bit of navy blue on it but mostly white i drew it in gray but i'm thinking mostly white with balloon sleeves i don't know if i want long or short right now i'm leaning towards long and so i found this pattern on etsy and i thought it was perfect because i think i can customize it enough to kind of like draw it back to exactly what i want I've started on my sailor top. Also did my um, darts on the back and on the front. I want it to be boxy and oversized and I think I can tailor it after that, you know? But I think it'll be good. And I'm very excited to be using my overlocker. Stunning. Anyway. Found this really thin ribbon and I just attached that all across to give that kind of, you know, I just wanted one. I was going to do two, um, but I just ended up doing one just to keep it again, more minimal. And also I just didn't trust myself making spaces like that looked even enough. So I attached that all around the line and I just did it about an inch away. And then I also wanted to add lace. So I put that in towards facing towards like the middle part. And then whenever you put the top part on, you do right sides facing together. And that's how it looks before it's ironed and before it's top stitch. So that's what I did. I ironed it and then top stitch all around it just to kind of keep it flat hi i am still working on this this is what i have so far the top looks really cute it's turned out very cute i tried it on as just like a vest thing you know what should i try it out for you maybe i should see so it looks really cute sleeveless and i don't know if i want this to be long sleeve short sleeve or what right here it needs to be ironed because then it'll look a little bit better but i'm going to make my office upstairs part sewing room because it's taken over my dining room. I feel bad for <laughs> the other people who have to live with me. But um, anyway, so I need to tighten my stupid, my foot. It keeps coming loose. I feel like this top would look so cool with any sleeve, but I chose to gather it. It's a, That's what it called for in the pattern. But next time I'm going to try just a normal sleeve. Just took my seams over to the overlocker. And if you don't have that, you can just zigzag stitch them as with everything in this video. Okay, next we have a dupe alert because the Cicely Bonson tops like the baby doll style tops in particular have a chokehold on me. Love it as is, so I just want to recreate it as close as I can to the original as possible, which I don't know if that's bad, but I am excited. Wait, I forgot a zipper. I went and got the fabric this morning um, and I'm doing this like light yellow. I've been trying to thrift this fabric for so long and I have not had any luck. I want like a textured one. I'm just going with like a basic yellow. I feel like I can wear it constantly and I need ties, like uh, straps or something of some sort. Hopefully they have what I need and hopefully I don't have to come back because this is two in one day. I hate when that happens. From my research, it looks like it calls for a zipper. Um, the, the original top has a zipper on the side. Uh, I'm doing the, the original that doesn't have any ties in the back or that's what I thought, you'll see. Um, anyway, and then I just measured across my bust and I wanted to do a folded hem kind of thing to where the top is folded and then I'm just going to straight stitch on the top. Um, and so I made my first draft and then I didn't make it as wide as I wanted it because I wanted some extra wiggle room because you can always shorten it. So that one ended up perfect. And then I went in and cut the fabric. I have the fabric all cut out. This is my one first piece and I'm about to just run a stitch across the top this is only half wait thank god i just did this because i had both of my i was like why does it feel so thick you know what i mean i had both of the cuts in it but this is the one to be one of them it kind of worked i earned them both at the same time and it worked so um like i didn't mean to but anyway this is i don't know if you can tell the color but it's like a really pretty like lemon i would say butter but it's not it's like a little bit more lemony than a butter but that's perfect you know um so i'm going to run a stitch across the what is it called the zipper really quickly which i think the zipper actually i think i'm gonna try to do invisible like the color i wish i could have found 
more of like a buttery yellow. Is that what it's called, I think? Just a reminder, in case you're doing something like this, to um, do your darts before you connect to the thing. That's probably obvious to most, but I had to seam rip this, even as beautiful as I thought it was. Um, I seam ripped it because I forgot to do the darts on each side. The bottom part, I really just eyeballed. I went around my body like as, long, as many times as I could, and it ended up being about like one and three fourths times or one and a half. And so then I just ended up cutting the length off and I wanted it in between like a top and a dress you know, kind of five. And so that's what I ended up doing. I had to like shorten it a few times to get it perfect, but. So I just ironed down. I'm doing my hem really quick before I do the gathering on like this part. It might be easier while it's all like disassembled to so just do the hem really quick, gather the top part of under the bust and then surge it at the zipper. It like, this is, seems like it's going to be a quick thing. Let's see. Okay, this is so satisfying to me. I just did the darts and then I had to redo this seam, but all is well i feel like it's going to be perfect for the gathered part i was just going off of whatever fabric i had left but i wanted it as gathered as possible so i ended up gathering it and then just kind of evening it out while i was pinning it this is the part where i added the zipper also i know it's on incorrect thankfully i realized that before connecting it but um this was the morning i woke up no i was like literally thinking about this top in my sleep because yesterday i tried it on and it was like way too big i will show you how much it needs to come off of it i don't know if you can see that but that's how much. I still have to do the hook and eye for the zipper, but. And for this piece, I think I'm going to try to hand sew on the straps, which I recently just started learning the actual professional way to hand sew in a class that I'm taking on Skillshare because I've kind of just been winging it for a while, honestly. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have been taking their learn to sew, all the skills you need to make your own clothing learning path because I feel like I need that like confidence boost or like just knowledge to give me that confidence um, as far as like how my technique is and things like that, that I just, I feel like I'm lacking. And I feel like it's just something that's really necessary if I want to continue my DIY wardrobe, which I do. I'm actually almost done with the first part of the path and I'm so excited to graduate to the next one, but I was really excited when I logged on and I realized that Bernadette Banner is actually the teacher on there, which I, she's someone I've loved on YouTube for so long. She actually taught me a new stitch, which I did not know anything about. Um, it's called the felling stitch and I'm very excited to use it for my next project for like a stronger hand stitch that's also really decorative. As someone who is hobby obsessed, I feel like Skillshare is kind of perfect because they have classes, like thousands of classes on literally anything you can think of. So if you would also like to try Skillshare, the first 500 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And I'm really excited about about that so if you end up using it let me know what you're gonna learn and thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring let's try the first two on and then I'll show you the other ones as well in the processes with those this is how the sailor top turned out it I'm really happy with it okay I'm like almost 100% happy with it I think I messed up the collar a little bit but I ended up fixing it it's a little bit wonkier with the ribbon is but it's okay, it was my first time ever doing something like that. And I just think this is so cute. I just wanted a simple sailor top and that's what it is. I think I'm gonna get so much wear out of it. So let me try it on and let's style it. But where I really think this is going to shine is in the summertime with some like white shorts or like bloomery shorts or something. Love it, I love how it turned out. I love the darts here. I use like a thicker iron-on interfacing and I really like it because when you turn, it just like, it all stays. You know what I mean? Here's the back. I made the sleeves like bell sleeve, which I don't normally go for. I actually did add elastic in them at one point, but then I ended up taking it out because I just did not like the way it looked all bunched up like that. I mean, it's not bad, but I figured if I keep them like this, I can always decide to reshape them into a more like just normal sleeve. But yeah, I'm really stoked to have this. I like that it's just simple. Like I've been saying, I also added some lace around the entire thing. So if you're looking for a longer version of this, I would just extend the pattern because I think that's was how the pattern was cut. Um, but I also wanna try this on with some bloomery shorts. Like this in the summer with some like sneakers or sandals or something. This hat is not a part of the video because I've already shown you it um, and I made it with you in a vlog, but um, my little sailor hat. I would never actually wear these two together, although I think it's cute. Why wouldn't I? When I'm looking at them, I'm like, wait, it's actually cute. This is the theme of the summer for me. And I just feel comfortable in this, you know, with denim shorts, oh my God. Yeah, these shorts are some of my favorite. I made these in a video a long time ago, bloomer video or something, but I like it with this shirt too. So this is another styling option. This is kind of, again, what I had in mind. Imagine this also with like really ruffled shorts. That could be so fun and cute. The pattern that I used, I think a lot of people use for cosplay as different things like that in the reviews. So I did tailor back some of the details just to make it more simplified. So I didn't put anything under here. Like normally there's supposed to be a little flap there or you can do a bow or different things right here. But again, I just wanted it very simple. So I'm glad I omitted those. You guys are gonna get sick of this shirt. 
Next up is the Lemon Sorbet baby doll style top. This one, again, you guys saw was self-drafted. In the beginning, I was like, oh my God, this is gonna take no time. And it really didn't take that long. It only got frustrating whenever it was like too big and I had to figure out how to you get it smaller, but I love how it turned out. I just added these straps on. These are temporary just because they're not the exact color of the dress, if you can see, but they're just like rope tie things that I found at um, Joann's. This is actually my first time trying it on with the straps. And I, thankfully these straps are not permanent because they're a little wonky off center, but so happy with how this turned out, the darts on the side, but I plan on styling it like over top of things, which I'll show you. I'm gonna try to style it after this. I ended up just adding ties, but I think I'm pretty happy with my decision. Let me show you how I plan to style it. I definitely have ripped off this outfit from somewhere and I cannot remember for the life of me who I saw wearing something like this. Anyway, I really liked the idea of a sport style top paired under it. I also keep seeing just in general, like tops like this paired over Jersey, varsity style, things like this. And I just, I think it's so fun. I think it's such a good combination. Also with jeans, I just think that the jeans I got also like, I love this piece. This is like my favorite thing, I think from the entire video. Also, you definitely could add pockets. I don't always care for pockets. Anyway, so here's my little lemon drop top. Oh. Lemon drop top, there we go. You guys, I made a long legged pair of bloomers. Essentially, I found this like plaid fabric at Joann's and it was on like super clearance. And so I just bought like the rest of it um, because it was so pretty and I felt like it's so lightweight, it felt really nice. I like that they're long because in the summer, if I wanted to, I could cut them into like shorter bloomers or I can just go get more fabric and then make the short version. But kind of based off of Salter House, this is how they fit. I wouldn't necessarily style them like this. I'm gonna style them in a second, but I'll talk about how I made them really quick because these are so, so simple. So you literally just take, I just like traced over a pair of pants that I have. I traced one left front panel of my pants, one left back panel of my pants, so I could get like the crotch and the dimensions on like how tall I want them. Then you make a rectangle all the way down to as long as you want them. To cinch them in, you could do elastic. I did ties and it was super simple. I just took another piece of fabric and made like a little area that the thread can go through or like the tie can go through. And then I found a tie from Joann's and I stuck it through. I can make more in depth, like real or short or something if you would rather me. Anyway, I love these so, so much. I think they turned out really nicely and they're exactly what I want. A pair of PJ looking pants that I can dress up. So let's do that. I'm more low waisted than I anticipated, but I think that's fine. Something like this, I kind of feel is up my alley with them where you can just kind of see them. So I don't know. I just wanted them for a little peek of fun. And I just think they're like, I, I'm just loving this pattern. Remember me trying to thrift a button down to upcycle, um, specifically like this shop, Norma Jean one. I just love these. It's a small business. If you can get something from their drop, I highly recommend. They're just so beautiful, but I'm going to try my hand at something similar to this. I have found this button up in my closet actually, which is scary to do, but I just tried it on and I tried to figure out how short I wanted it. And so I just tried out different lengths and I wanted some sort of like oval ish or rounded edge at the bottom. And so I just took a bowl to get as round as I could and then eyeballed the rest. And then I cut off the arms right above my like elbow, cut right along the um, collar line so that I could add my own oversized collar, which is the next step. I have like these old detachable ones. I just wanted to see for like shape wise and size wise. To be honest, this top was just not big enough for like the exaggerated collar that I wanted, but I worked with what I had and then I was going to attach those together. And then I also traced around the neckline to try to get what kind of angle I needed. And um, then I decided to seam rip to get as much fabric that I could out of this. And so I actually really helped. It ended up giving me like another inch or so and which I guess I didn't really need, but I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but it ended up working fine. And so I added some lace going inwards. And then again, I put the top on right sides facing together. And as you can see, I made sure <laughs> because I always double check, but this is how it would look whenever I sew it. And that's what I did. I sewed it together all around the edges. I should have taken my time. I don't know. This just, see, you'd see, I'm not going to zoom in, but you can see the little mark. This was like a half fail because it actually turned out so cute. The only thing that didn't is the collar. And I feel like that's like the most important part. I'm not gonna like go too far into <laughs> This wasn't like too oversized on me. And I think, I just think that was my issue. I didn't have enough like spare fabric or just like fabric in general to draft. I'm not like the most experienced or best at collars like this yet. If you plan on doing something like this, make sure your shirt is like super oversized. I think it's, I think it is cute though. Like it turned out cute and I'm definitely going to wear it. I just, again, I mean, kind of with a the mic there, you can't tell. Like, yeah, I think it's cute. I added a little bit of fabric underneath the arm just to give it a little bit more oomph because again, it was more fitted. I like adding lace to anything. I feel like that's such a fun, um, I, if you can find like a red and white button down or some sort of shirt at the thrift store, I think adding lace to anything like that, so cute. I've been wanting a black boat neck style t-shirt and I 
have this like tank top that I wear all the time that I thrifted. It has the perfect neckline. I think I'm even going to make it even straighter, but I am going to also add sleeves and I'm going to use this old fabric that I have. So um, I just traced around it. I added a few inches because my the fabric that I'm using is like a little bit less stretchy. And I also just traced the armholes and made the sleeves the shape that I wanted. I kind of just made them straight at first. And then I overlocked the edges. I should have changed the thread, but I don't use black enough that I, so I didn't want to go through that and um, connected all the pieces. It was so simple. And I had more fabric of this, so I made some stuff. So now I have a three piece set, which I'm not sure how much of this I showed. This is how the shirt turned out. It's so cute. It's exactly what I wanted. Fit this, it was just perfect. Stuff that I can wear constantly. So I have cropped leggings, which I've been talking about a lot in my trends. And I was like, what better way to try out a trend that I'm unsure about and to just make some. So I did that. And then I also have this little skirt to go over it, um, kind of inspired by Sandy Langs. This is how the shirt turned out. And I think it's literally perfect. The neckline is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. And the sleeves also what I wanted. I wanted them a little bit shorter because as it gets warmer, I feel like that would be like really nice to have. Normally, I don't, I don't really like that. But for some reason on this, they were long and I was just like, I feel like showing some sort of skin. I want to start wearing bracelets. So maybe that will inspire me to this. I think it turned out cute. I like that it cinches on my like waist right here, which was from the pattern that I traced or like the shirt before it. It also does that. And I think that's why I like it so much. And these are the pants without the skirt. I made it so that they can be separate. I'm just feeling chic Audrey Hepburn 60s vibes, you know, with a sling back like this. Just what I wanted this for to emulate that kind of feeling. But let me try the skirt on because I think it really adds to it. I feel like it gives that like more modern flair to it. And then also for this one, I made it, I just literally made like a little triangle, put like a really long tail on it so that I can fold it over and wrap it. Again, this is one that I didn't film, but it was really simple. It just adds that little bit of a flare. It ends right there. You can make it as short as you want. I can lengthen if I want. I can wear the skirt just alone if I wanted to, which it was important to me to have them all separated for, for like going out, but also it's really comfortable, like so comfortable. So I love it. <laughs> I really, really, really love how this turned out. And it was all kind of so random. Like it was all just self-drafted random. And that's kind of like my favorite way to sew. It's just random, chaotic, fun. Being able to take my time and like tailor things to how I want them to fit. And if this was a different color, like if I could find like a light pale yellow because Sandy Lang has a really cute little set like this and that's where I took the inspiration from, but it's in yellow. The only thing with this is that it gets hairy so fast. This fabric in particular, I just, I just like steamed everything and like lint rolled it and it's already. So I didn't want to, I was debating on doing like a Doan style, you know, the Doan skirt. Um, but then I realized I had this fabric, specifically this old court curtain that I um, had thrifted. And so I just wanted to make something with this. So I used this old Lisa Says Gauze skirt that I love, um, but I just wanted again to have a different version of it for um, times where I don't want like that embroidery on it. And so I just traced the top of it and kind of made it a little bit more rectangular in a way while still making like it go in towards the hips and I feel like if you just measure out your hips and then to waist um, it's kind of easy to draft up and like measure and draw out um, but that's what I did and then I also wanted a zipper on it and I also wanted a gathered hem and I wanted it to be long like long long not midi nothing I just wanted it to be dramatically like ethereal you know and so I the same as the yellow top I just gathered it as much as I could with the remaining fabric and then stuck it to the top and went around it and and um, at first I was like actually getting a little bit nervous that it was going to be too small before I had connected it because I guess I was wearing two pairs of pants here too, to be fair. Wanted but this skirt is something that I've wanted for so long. Just a nice basic. I still feel like I need to make it a little bit smaller. Just so pretty to me because of the drop waist and it's exactly what I've been wanting. And if I pull it up even more like that to get the full vision because after this I'm going to shorten it. But I love how this turned out. It was so simple, you guys. If you have scrap fabric, if you have like an old bed sheet curtain, this is a old, an old curtain that I thrifted. I just think it's like so cool. I like that it's like a little bit sheer, but not too sheer. So it's like a little bit of a tilted line. Just gather fabric and attach it and make it as long as you want. I added like a little slit just, because sometimes that's nice. I'm going to wear constantly. I love how long it is. You can dress this up, dress this down. This, I'm so, now that I'm like trying everything on with you guys, I'm like so excited. This is how I could style it too. It's just a plain black t-shirt with like a white frilly top, lacy top, sandals in the summertime. This is going to be great. It's also so lightweight. I think I thrifted this top over a year ago and I've always had it in my brain to upcycle it into a tube top for some reason because I didn't like the sleeves on it and I just felt like it would fit better like that. So that's what I did. This one was a little bit more random, but it turned out really cute. Again, this was just a shirt that I thrifted that didn't really fit me. I still need to make like some adjustments. Like here, I feel like it needs to go in a little bit more and then out, but it's obviously too cold to wear this like this 
in the spring. So I really thought that this would be cute with a trench coat. I think it looks adorable. I love it when you can just like tell that it's a sleeveless top underneath. So I did change out the buttons. Yeah, I just made them like bigger. Yeah, I'm still kind of workshopping this one, but I do like how it turned out and I love the color and everything. And again, I just need to make some adjustments. This was more random. So I did want to include it though, because I did make it in this time span. So it was super easy. Just cut off the um, sleeves, the top part and um, hemmed the top kind of thing, changed out the buttons and it was done. I feel like I haven't actually tried it on without a shirt on. Like I kept trying it on with the tank top on and now I get like the full, maybe if I like cut little slits in here so this can kind of like swing out a little bit more, I don't know. Okay, so I know I've been talking about like making clothes for me. Well, I'm making my sister a really cute dress right now and I think you guys might like this. So I'm going to film little parts of it and show you it after. Um, but essentially it's going to look like this. It's a tie front dress. It's kind of like the Ghani shirt, but in dress form. And I wanna do like an A-line skirt, I think with like a little slit. And I want the entire top part to be lined. So, or not, yeah, I guess lined, but lined with this fabric. So I'm just like double, doubling up on this one for the lining. And this is how like the first half turned out. I'm just about to overlock the inner parts just so that it like sits really nicely. This side will tie in the front, that kind of thing. And um, I'm excited. This is really pretty. It's technically to wear tomorrow. We're going to see Olivia Rodrigo um, on the Guts tour. And so she was like stressing about like, oh, what do I wear, what do I wear, whatever. And I was like, why don't I make you like a cute dress? So we found like a bunch of dresses for inspiration and kind of combined them all. This fabric is so pretty. It's like this gauze. I found it at Joann's. Okay, I just sewed darts in on the front and the back because I want it to be a little bit more fitted. I'm going to sew at the shoulder seams and then I'm going to do the same thing to the lining and then I'm going to attach the lining to this. This is just like the normal one. Um, I'm like so close to being done. I am just like sewing together the top and skirt part. And so I've just been like focusing. I've been doing this all day. So, cause I need to get it done by tomorrow and I don't want to work it on tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like the day of. So, so, so this is the top part, this is the skirt. And then I'm just going to hem the skirt afterwards. But I'll show you once it's done. Brought the mannequin out to show it on. Okay. I just finished. I feel a little bit more confident with the pieces that I made this time. And I still wear and love the pieces I made last time too, but I feel like it's fun to like, I watched that video last night and it's fun to see like yourself kind of learn more. That's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you like videos like this. I would actually love to do a part two for spring and summer because obviously these things are like more spring, but I also do have a few more things that I just did not have time for. And I didn't want to make this video like an hour, two hours long. So anyway, let me know if you'd like to see that and I will talk to you guys next time. Also, if you do like videos like this, subscribe. I have tons of fashion videos, sewing videos, DIYs, um, vlogs on my channel if you are new here. And uh, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Also check them out down below and I hope you guys have the best day ever. Bye.